After reviewing hundreds of websites over the past 12 months for leads and prospects and clients, here are the top tips for e-commerce success that you cannot avoid. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman. I cover the world's most exciting brands and marketing trends so that both you and I can grow our businesses better and faster. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the top e-commerce tips for success. Now, over the past 12 months, uh, Good Monster, my marketing agency, has been actively trying to acquire and onboard new clients. We've got really great process and we're super excited about it. And in doing so, we have done audits and reviews of hundreds of prospects and leads and clients. And these are the most common issues that we find with even some of the biggest brands out there, biggest direct-to-consumer, uh, uh, digitally native brands who you'd think would have everything covered, but they don't. And that's purely because they don't know what they don't know. And often internal teams, you know, are focused on so many different things and so many different channels and so many different, you know, uh, opportunities for uh, acquiring customers that they miss some of the small things, but they are increasingly important as competition increases, um, acquisition of customers becomes a little bit more difficult. So let's dive into what those things are because they're super important. Okay, thing number one is basic CRO, conversion rate optimization. Now, most businesses, direct-to-consumer businesses and e-commerce businesses are focused on their website, but the first place they go is what does it look like? So oftentimes there's beautiful designs and clean designs and fantastic brands, but they miss small basic triggers. For instance, one misconception is that you need to have your call to action buttons everywhere. You need to have them in the menu, you need to have them in the hero banner, you need to have them midway down through the page, you need to have them in the footer, and you need to have them on every single blog post. Now, this is a spray and pray approach, but if you're not careful, what ends up happening with all of these different hooks and calls to action is that you spray and pray the actual consumer, the actual visitor. They get overwhelmed. There's too many buttons. There's too many pop-ups. There's too many exit intents. There's too many live chats. Now, what that does, not only is it mentally offends your customer, your potential customer, to the point where they don't know where to click. There's too many different call to actions. But also, this slows down your website. And that is one of the most basic, basic, basic things that you should be after if you're a digitally native brand. Or heck, if you're any website, you should be really trying to execute a fast delivery of your website to the person visiting. That means within the first two seconds, you should have 90% of your website loaded. If you don't, then certain people on certain browsers with certain internet speeds may not actually get to the thing that you want to sell them. All right, They might click on your Google ad your Google Shopping ad, and the page takes five seconds to load. And in that five seconds, they've said, you know what, I'm in a hurry. I'm going to get back and look for something else. Don't underestimate your site speed. It's the most basic CRO activity you can do. And resist the urge to do more upsells, more cross-sells, more pop-ups, because it's just going to keep slowing your website down even faster. And they'll never get to the call to action. They'll never get to the pop-up, okay? So basic CRO number one is site speed. Basic CRO number two is think of your, your customer and your consumer who's visiting your website. They don't want to see 457 different pop-ups and spin the wheels and enter your email for 10% off, okay? They just want to see why you're valuable and they want to see how many other people think you're valuable also, okay? So if you're going to have a call to action, you're going to have a pop-up or you're going to have any of that, make sure it's got a strong testimonial, uh, a bunch of evidence of five-star reviews because that social proof will be all of the uh, hook and the conversion uh, uh, optimization that you need. Okay, tip number two is when you're looking for fast results, PPC is the fastest way that you can get results. Now, this year in 2022, we're seeing brands shy away from spending more in ads because ad costs are going up. It's more difficult, especially over on Facebook, uh, you know, to get results. Uh, and a lot of brands that come to us we're, are finding that they're spending maybe 50% more than they were last year and getting the same, if not less results, less return on their ad spend. And they don't really know what to do. But 
The fact of the matter is, uh, even if it is a little bit more expensive to run PPC, specifically Google ads, Google shopping ads or Google search ads, even if it is a little bit more expensive to acquire your customer via that channel, it still is the fastest if somebody's never heard of you. So uh, a lot of marketers will argue out there that, well, email marketing and text marketing is the fastest, but that you need an existing list for that. You need existing subscribers. And while that is true, that you can, you can get the quickest revenue usually from a, a, an email you know, a, a discount or something like that, if you don't currently have the audience or you're looking to acquire new customers, PPC is the fastest way. And Google specifically, because it is a search engine, a true search engine, not like TikTok is a search engine. Everyone keeps saying like Gen Z uses TikTok as a search engine. I mean, they do, but it's different. You go to Google if you're looking for how to do something or the best product of something. You're looking to do some research generally with some sort of end goal. All right. In the broad sense of the term, that's generally what Google, you're looking for a video, you're looking for information, you're looking for a product, you're looking for a how-to, you're looking for a recipe, you're looking for something. I would assume it's Google and Amazon for the most transactional platforms, right? Somebody goes there to look for something specific to do something with, to take an action on. Social media is different. We go there to be entertained, to when we're bored, when we need a mental break. But Google and Amazon are search engines, true search engines. That means people go there to find answers, and they're going to come to a conclusion at some point. This makes Google specifically, and Amazon, this makes Google a very transactional place to run ads. And what I mean by that is that if you run Google ads, you run good Google ads, shopping ads, or search ads, you're going to catch the people that need to buy what you're offering. If you, tar if you have the right targeting, the right audience targeting, the right keyword targeting, um, those people that are searching, you're going to funnel them in. They already have a transactional search intent. They are looking to take action on something. This is different from Facebook or TikTok ads uh, because over there you're interrupting them. You're trying to convince them that you're great and you're hoping that you build the brand and you're hoping that you catch them at the right time where they maybe will say, you know what, I'll click on this to see more about it. But over on Google, they're already looking for what you're offering if you target right, and you're much more likely to convert over there. So even if PPC is a bit more expensive this year, it's still the fastest way to win new customers when it's completely cold, okay? So focus on PPC. Find a way to make sure you have somebody who's doing excellent targeting. By the way, my agency, Good Monster, can help you out if you need anything, but excellent targeting and that is the fastest way to acquire customers. Even if it's a little bit higher CAC, even if it's a little bit higher cost to acquire a customer, you can build that out on lifetime value and engagement and value add on the back end in order, in order to justify the cost up front. okay? But PPC is the fastest. Okay, next thing that we're really seeing is that distribution is really important. Now, for a consumer brand, distribution has always been important. In fact, you see digital native brands like Warby Parker and Harry's uh, of the early 2000s, 2010s, really, that came to prominence by building a direct-to-consumer digital native brand. They're getting into stores like Target now and Walmart, right? They're getting that distribution online, offline. They want to be everywhere because when you want to build a brand that is top of mind, you have to be available. You have to be easily accessible everywhere. Now, this is also true just online because people now are very digitally native. We have a whole generation in Gen Z that has basically grown up with the internet and social media, okay? And so when they want something, they want to find something, they're going to go to Google and they're going to search best sneakers, most popular sneakers, best sneakers to wear with jeans. Like, they're going to search those things. They're going to go over to Amazon. They're going to do the same thing, all right? Then they're going to go to social media and they're going to look for suggestions who their favorite influencers and celebrities and athletes are wearing for inspiration, right? So they're looking everywhere for inspiration on what they should invest in. Um, I use invest in a, a different way, obviously, but where, where they're going to spend their money, what products they're going to buy, all right? This means you sort of need to be everywhere. However, don't overcomplicate this because the place you need to be first is where you are available to buy. 
So stemming from the last little tip of Google and Amazon being highly uh, transactional search platforms, if you are a digital native brand, you sell a product, you should be on the places that people are going to shop. That's step number one. So the places you need to be, definitely need to have a website, and you need to work to show up in Google. PPC, SEO, over time, you need to show up in those places, okay? Affiliate marketing is another way to do this because you show up in best sneakers of 2022 type blog posts, okay? So that's the first place. Second place is Amazon. In most cases, you should probably be on Amazon. It is the largest marketplace in the world. It is the place where the majority of people go to shop for their products online first, and they often price compare on Amazon. You could start to sneak in Walmart into this argument as well, because here in the United States, Walmart is a fast growing uh, marketplace, uh, not nearly as big as Amazon, but they are a very reputable place to buy products. And they have a similar model as Amazon, meaning you don't actually have to have a retail relationship with Walmart to sell on walmart.com. And then there's other retail platforms that are, are uh, marketplace platforms that are still highly valuable depending on the niche that you're in, like Etsy and eBay. And then in other countries uh, like Brazil, Australia, UK, there's, there's other mar marketplaces as well. There's Shopee, there's Mercado Livre, right? So having distribution in your particular country uh, and making sure that you have distribution on the platforms that your audience is going to is important. After you establish the places to buy your things, Okay, and optimizing the SEO in, in that platform. So S Amazon SEO, Google SEO, uh, uh, eBay SEO, whatever platform you're on. After you establish that, then you can back into social media, working with influencers, probably working with nano and micro influencers to really scale, uh, go wide, uh, be in a lot of different uh, places. Uh, it's also much more affordable. Then you can back over there, back into there to inspire people to go look for your product. Okay. That's how I would tackle online distribution. Okay, and thing number four uh, is a bit counterintuitive to my thing number three, but it is if you're just starting, don't start on social media. Social media is extremely hard in today's day and age. It's hard, it's, it's, it's hard to break through the noise. There's so much noise. Everyone and every brand and every organization is on social media, and they're all trying to vie for attention of a uh, limited number of people, even though there are a lot of limited number of peoples. Um, but starting on social media is hard. Unless you have the secret sauce, unless you have a lot of experience being an influencer or creator and you know exactly how to growth hack your way to social media success, you're probably not going to find a lot of initial success on social media. So here's my suggestion of how to tackle social media if you're in a, a challenger brand. Number one, get on social media. Number two, Put your best, most valuable content on social media. Not selfishly valuable for your brand, valuable for your potential customer, your persona or your ICP if you're a B2B company. Well, if you're B2B, you're not an e-commerce. So uh, if, you're, if you're an e-commerce company, direct-to-consumer or consumer company, when you get on social media, put value there. If you're a sneaker company, don't just put your sneakers on there. You can put beautiful pictures of your sneakers on there. But in addition... Put the most valuable things. If your ideal customer are basketball players, put in their tips to become a better basketball player. All right? This will keep them coming back because you are sharing valuable tips. It shows you understand the industry. And then they're going to see that you offer shoes and you have a beautiful, comfortable, you know, high-performance sneakers. Right? So put value onto your social media. And just put enough out there to stay relevant. Post once a week or something like that. Focus on the quality of the post, not the quantity of the posts. And then in ins instead, focus on the revenue-driving activities like CRO, PPC. Um, probably not going to go on Amazon if you're selling sneakers, although you could if they're a low price point. Uh, but, but Amazon and Marketplace. Focus on the distribution. Then focus into tapping into other people's audience like affiliate marketing, joint ventures, brand brand partnerships, things like that, to build awareness rather than just trying to uh, uh, force your own awareness on social media. But then you have the basic stuff on social media such that when somebody does go over and look for you on social media, they see, oh, you're a brand, you exist, right? Uh, another small tip with social media is if you post um, UGC that's in line with your brand, that helps with social proof, right? So user-generated content. 
have your early customers post pictures um, or send pictures rather. You don't even have to post it on their social media. And then lay over a little testimonial with a five-star review over that graphic and post that on Instagram or post that on TikTok just for social proof when somebody does look for you on social media. Okay, and thing number five, the last thing is a really important one. Um, I kind of teased it in the last tip, but if you're just starting out, if you're a new brand or you're a challenger brand, you're really trying to make your way in the world and make an impact in your industry, give it away for free. Not publicly, right? But give it away for free uh, within your communities. So I'll give you an example. So I used to have a jean company with my wife. Uh, we closed it down. We couldn't focus on it enough. It was also not a great uh, industry for us to be in. But anyways, we had this jeans company, and it was focused on the athletic community. So what we did is we went around to CrossFit events and athletic events and brought some pairs of our jeans. We set up a little pop-up booth, and everybody that walked by, we said, do you want to try on a pair of jeans? Okay, we'll give you a free T-shirt or a free hat. They could choose. Okay, so we gave that away just to have them try the jeans on, give us feedback, and the only requirement was they had to leave an honest review on our website. So within the first month, we collected 150, uh, like 4.8 star reviews, which provided the early success because it provided a lot of social proof. We took pictures of every single person in the jeans. We attached that uh, to the review. Uh, they left the review, the five-star review, and then what we did is we used the picture, we took their review and put it over the top of it, and then we posted it on our social media, all right? We gave stuff away for free. We didn't even give the jeans away for free. We just gave t-shirts and hats away for free in order to buy those reviews effectively, all right? This provided the early foundation and the social proof that we needed uh, and, our, and our potential customers needed to trust us. And then we were able to sell a lot easier because people saw the reviews and they're like, oh, everybody loves these jeans. They fit great. They're good for athletes. It worked out really well. So I suggest you do the same. If you don't have at least 100 five-star reviews, um, you don't have Google reviews, you don't have uh, reviews anywhere, you don't have reviews on Amazon, okay, I would highly suggest you go the free model, get the reviews, uh, get the testimonials, get the pictures, and use that to, as leverage to then get your first large quantity of sales because now you'll have the social proof. Okay, there you go. There is five tips that uh, I think you should all really consider if you're trying to grow your e-commerce company. And even if you're a $50 million plus D to C brand, go back to your team and review these things because you might be surprised that you're missing some basic stuff, especially that first one, the site speed one. You might be getting a uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in sales on your website. But if your site speed is slow, you're probably also losing tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of dollars in revenue because your site speed is slow. So don't miss the basic stuff. If you found this video valuable, please hit subscribe and like, you know, all the normal stuff and forward this to your team. That's the most important part because I want you to succeed and we'll see you in the next video.